Hello, I'm Chris Lisher, and welcome to Turning of the Wheel, an intelligent, lively discussion on astrology, art, and adventure. Timing is everything, and as the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. Join me as I explore the current planetary alignments and offer insights for coping with change. Educational, informative, and enlightening, the turning of the wheel is a welcome pause in your daily swirl of constant change. Through intelligent discourse, inspired guests, and educational segments, I will help to enlighten your knowledge of astrology and guide you to accept change as the great wheel of life turns. Call in with your questions and speak with some of the greatest visionaries in the time-tested practice of astrology. Turning of the Wheel. Astrology, art, and adventure with Chris Flisher each week on Turning of the Wheel podcast. Hello and welcome to Turning of the Wheel. As you know, this is a show about astrology, and astrology is a hot topic these days because we've got all this great activity happening in the Capricorn Mansion, and all that activity is foretells something. And we have two eclipses. We've had eclipse back in December, an eclipse coming up uh, in the next day or so, and I thought of nobody better to have on my show than Dietrich Pessin, who's the author of Lunar Shadows 3, The Predictive Power of Moon Phases and Eclipses. And she's a marvelous expert in this and does has done an enormous amount of Real pioneering work in the uh, study and the uh, use of astrology in, in new and pioneering ways, looking for new aspects and finding new information. And she's really a pioneer in that regard. So it's a great honor to have her on. I spent a lot of time working with her in her classes in her local place. She's out of Boston, and it's great to see her. Her website is lunar-shadows.com. It's L-U-N-A-R dash S-H-A-D-O-W-S dot com, lunarshadows dot com. She also hosts a radio show every Saturday morning at 9.30 on WZBC, uh, which is 90.3, which is the Boston College Station. I'm pretty sure you can pick that up on the web, but we can find that out when I get her on. Before we get started, I want to remind you about my newsletter, which goes out every Sunday afternoon. In there, you'll find a couple of paragraphs of mundane astrology as it applies to all of us on the planet. And then I break it out in individual signs. You'll see links in there to my radio shows, my podcasts, uh, my artwork, as well as my television shows as well. They're all in there. All links are all in part of the uh, newsletter. And I encourage you to sign up for it. And it's free. But if you feel so inclined to help out this poor old astrologer, there's a donation button on the front there. You can always throw a dollar or two or more in there if you're so inclined. And uh, that helps keep this great wheel turning. And I do appreciate any any sort of um, contributions that come my way. Anyway, without further ado, let's get my guest on, Dietrich Pesson. She's the author of Lunar Shadows 3, The Predictive Power of Moon Faces and Eclipses. Her website is lunar-shadows.com. And as I said before, she is the host of a radio show called, on WZBC. That's Z as in zebra, B as in boy, C as in corn. 90.3 Boston College every Saturday morning at 9.30. So it's always a great honor to have her on. Welcome to the show, Dietrich. It's great to see you again. Have you on? Hey, Chris. So great to talk with you. Yeah. And I, I I love seeing you around the astrology circuit when we do run into one yeah, another. Yeah, it's fun. We are sort of, yeah. uh, we're sort of, we, uh, we're we the have opposites. This, um, <laughs> this ama- amazing lunar eclipse tomorrow at in this neck of the woods, it's 2.21 p.m. Mm-hmm. We won't see it because the moon will be high in the sky. And, and rather, the sun will be high in the sky and the moon will be on the other side of the planet. And what, um, what is interesting about this is that it happens at 20 degrees of cancer. Mm-hmm. And that's a, an interesting spot where a solar eclipse occurred. At that same spot, 20 degrees of Cancer, July 12, 2018. So, you know, these these dates, like July 12, 2018, if that's your birthday or someone very close to you has that birthday, then you may know that it, it was the seed to some type of major event or maybe some turmoil. And lunar eclipses normally will bring a lot of information out in the open, I, I say that it's all the cards on the table. Mm-hmm. And what we have um, are a lot of cards. This moon at 20 Cancer opposes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven points in Capricorn. Yeah, it's incredible. Just incredible. Yes. Yes. So it's a seesaw like, you know, like the kind that would, would, would set off an earthquake or tip the scales, you know, big heavy load on one end, and there's the moon flying up in the sky on the other end. So it's, you know, kind of hold on uh, to your seats. 
and put the seat belt on. Uh, what, there are so many things that are really dominating this energy of this uh, lunar eclipse. For one thing, when I mentioned that June, uh, that, that July 12th date when there was a solar eclipse at the same spot, there's another date related uh, to this, and that's when the lunar node reached 20 degrees of Cancer. So that would be May 3rd oh, last year. Oh, May 3rd. Okay, fine. Yeah, that's right. That's May 3rd, 2018 or 19? 19. 19. 19. 19. Right. Okay. So I don't know if you remember anything going on, but, you know, there was all the, you know, the decision about the Russian tampering and, and Trump and Mm -hmm. Putin had decided actually on that date that there was no collusion. Right. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> who, who are they fooling? Right. Of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so here we are, you know, uh, you know, several months later, and the lunar eclipse has taken place at the same degree. Ordinarily, you'll find that an eclipse will fizzle out when the lunar node has already activated that point. So that's the thing to watch. Is, okay. Was the lunar node there? Yes, it was in, uh, in May. But this one's loaded. You know, it's, it's as if they picked up a great big gun and loaded it with Jupiter, the Sun, Mercury, the small planet Ceres, Saturn, and Pluto on one end, and then the moon on the other, and then a very exciting character, Uranus, you know, I, Going I direct call right that. there. Yeah, I know. It's just yeah. adds a whole new element to the whole mix. Exactly. So Uranus turns direct hours within hours of the lunar eclipse that's right. tomorrow. Yeah. So and that's got, that's got to be something important there. I mean, there's got to be, I mean, Uranus typically, you know, I mean, you mentioned earthquakes as we're all looking at all this earth-based energy. And of course, Uranus being in Taurus at the time, you would sort of look like that. And it does seem to, you know, be the foretelling sign for things like earthquakes and natural disasters, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But it also is an indicator of reversals. Oh, and so what would, what would we reverse? So here was the killing of the general on the 3rd of January. Right. The 3rd of January was the exact uh, midpoint of where the sun would be between the two eclipses, one that was uh, that occurred the day after Christmas, the 26th of December, and then this one that's going to occur tomorrow. They're 16 degrees apart, so that would put the sun at 12 degrees of Capricorn. <laughs> Well, that's where it was when they killed the general. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So it it did not look as if this was going to go too far where Uranus was going to make a reversal. Mm -hmm. So that reversal, you know, acts in our favor in regard to, you know, are we sending our kids off to war? Right, exactly. And that and that 12 that 12 degrees is also exactly opposite the um the son of the United States at 13. Oh, yeah. yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Yeah. So that's a very important uh, point. You know, all eyes are on us. There, you know, there's, there's different reviews in regard to how people saw that event. And uh, there would be different, different opinions uh, going into the future. If we go into the future with this lunar eclipse, we're going to find a date in October, October 9th. That is when there'll be a last quarter moon near the same degree near the same where day. this eclipse. lunar eclipse occurs. Right. So let me explain how that happens. July 12, 2018, there was a solar eclipse. And I wrote a book about this. So this is the, the foundation for uh, what the material that's in Lunar, Sh Lunar Shadows 3. Mm -hmm. So it starts with a solar eclipse on July 12. Then there's a first quarter moon on April 12. When's your birthday, Chris? April 1st. April 1st. Okay. Well, I, I like to say it's March 32nd. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So if you want to think back to April 12 of 2019, see what was happening in your life or around the lives of others 
um, that you can you can identify right. some of this eclipse energy that then moves forward uh, on January 10th. Um, that's tomorrow, 2020, with the lunar eclipse. Nine months after that is the third quarter moon, and that happens on October 9th, 2020. 2020 and this here's, the, here's the thing. Where we just had a major eclipse event on January 3rd, uh, we can expect nine months after that, which would make that October 3rd, to be a major event again. So would there be another tail that wags the dog event at that period, Mm -hmm. heading into the third quarter moon on October 9th, 2020, that's going to offset, uh, offset the energy, once again, of these uh, eclipses that had, had occurred, and it's mm-hmm. before the U.S. election. Right. It so could be a very I critical would, time right at that point. That point. Exactly. Mm-hmm. I would expect there to be a lot of drama and uh, a, a, lot of, a, a lot of major stuff, much like what we just saw that uh, Trump's been trying to avoid the impeachment, uh, you know, uh, the trial. And now, uh, as he tries to avoid an upset in an election, what is it that's going to come up? Well, this is the idea that I like about you talking about a reversal of sorts, because if we've been going down this road and we're clearly not happy with sort of the direction, a lot of us are not happy. I mean, I can't say that for everybody, but a lot of us are not happy about the direction the country has taken with regard to wars and intervention and the corruption that we're seeing unfolding. The reversal of that might be a, you know, sort of this transparency now brings all these things into light. And the, the eclipses are always about some sort of a highlight of light of some sort, you know, either either a exposure or a, a suppression of light. And this might be an opportunity for that to sort of all come out into the open as more information comes out that would sort of like bust open this whole thing with irrefutable evidence, it seems. Well, you would think that would make a difference. Mm-hmm. However, there's the nature of this uh, president, uh, the, the nature of his character, which attracts people who are thrilled with anything that's going to shake things up and change things. Mm -hmm. And even, even people who have a very, who seek a very peaceful spiritual path in their life have voted for him and say they will vote for him again. Simply because of the distraction factor and disruption factor. Yeah. They love it. Mm -hmm. They love it. And it's like, but, but do you love what he's done to the land? Do you love what he's done to our wildlife, to our ecology, to our air, to our water, to the poor people, to the, you know, immigrants? Yeah. Um, all, all of these topics. Now, it's interesting. When we look at that third quarter moon, October 9th, which is completely related to tomorrow, um, it has uh, four retrograde major planets. Neptune in Pisces is retrograde. Uh, Mars is retrograde in Aries, and then Uranus is retrograde in uh, uh, in Taurus, Taurus yeah. and then Chiron is retrograde in Aries as well, and then so is um, Ceres retrograde in Aquarius. All of that retrograde, and here's here's the other thing that's going on. Mars is retrograde uh, Mercury, too. Mm-hmm. Mars is retrograde, and Mercury will be retrograde at that time. So. What we have, um, it will turn direct actually on Election Day. The Mars doesn't turn direct until November 13th. So it tends to look like there's a redo, you know, redo, renew, redo. That's review. exactly right. Yeah, review all the RV words, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, w- I'm wondering, you know, is there a chance to shake loose um, the entertainer in the White House? And the personality, and it can come right down to just that. When it comes to election, it won't be about what they stand on, what their platform is. It's going to be about personality. And that, you know, it's going to be, who do you like? It's the the electability, yeah. And are are you happier today than you were, you know, four years ago? Are things better today? Obviously, income inequality is huge in this country. There's so much money sitting at the top. None of that is trickling right. down as they said it would. Of course, we knew that. We saw that it didn't work before with Ronald Reagan. All of this uh, right. trickle-down talk is just um, 
ridiculous in that regard. And so this might be the great, uh, you know, the coming to, you know, the great come to the mountains uh, scenario where people finally say we're done. We're, we've had enough. We want our quality back. Who knows? This could be the reversal you're talking about. It could be, but it, it, it also, the challenge here is so huge for it to be able to break through. Yeah. There, you know, I don't, I don't have the birthdays of many of the candidates on the Democratic side. Uh, I have jo- Joe Biden on November 20th, 1942, at 8.30 a.m. in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. He has his moon at zero Taurus, and uh, his son is in Scorpio, conjunct Venus. Uh, I know that— um, He'll have a, uh, he'll have a uh, you know, something to do with Uranus will be going on in his chart. Right, right. And and Elizabeth Warren is uh her birthday is at zero degrees, takes place where zero degrees of cancer lands. So there's a solar eclipse coming up at that degree this summer. That really puts her in the limelight. Interesting. So that that's an interesting um, thing. That's interesting to point that out because, you know, right now they, a lot of the pundits on the radio are talking about how she's sort of falling behind and maybe she's just gathering steam for that big push when that comes. Well, there are a couple of things that will push that. You know, one of the things, you know, we look to the transiting uh, moon phases. Like if for this lunar eclipse, we have another date that you want to keep your eye on. That's April 7. Mm-hmm. And uh, April 7, there's a full moon that's going to square this lunar eclipse point. So that's likely to be loud yes. in regard to things happening. March 24 is another one that's uh, a new moon at four degrees Aries. That's square to the solar eclipse we had a day after Christmas Mm -hmm. at four Capricorn. So there's where that story turns, um, or it's called, I call that the pivot point of the year when there is a new moon or a full moon square to the last major eclipse event. So you want to, you know, mark that date and, and have a look at what's going on March 24th and then also April 7th. Hmm. And that March 24th rings in the energy that's going to come in June 21st with a solar eclipse at zero cancer. Wow, right on the solstice. Yep, yep. And and then um, the one that we're going to have, uh, where is it, April 7th, there's, there are actually two lunar um, events, two full moons that are related to the lunar eclipses that we'll see in the summer. June 5, uh, there's a lunar eclipse at 15 Sag, and then July 5, there's a lunar eclipse at 13 Capricorn. So those things um, are set off both March 9th and April 7th coming up. Yeah. Yeah. Important things. And, and what do you expect you think we'll see? I mean, what's the sort of the symbolism that, you're, that, that, that speaks to you about these times? Well, it, the symbolism is that the dialogue changes. Mm-hmm. So whatever we're talking about now, it will shift on those dates. It will, there'll be a totally new topic. So, like, let's say you're telling me about... Uh, the fact that you're downsizing on your house and you're mm-hmm. going to sell your house, and I will probably be speaking with you in the springtime around those dates, and you'll say, "Oh, we're we're moving. You changed yeah. your topic. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you totally changed your topic. You may not even be talking about housing or moving or anything like that, but something completely new. Right. That's true. I can see that. Yeah. So, yeah. You can you can use this same uh, method of trigger uh, trigger points with your own birthdays. Right. So April 1st, go three months before that, and what's that, January 1st? That's right, yeah. Okay, January 1st, your story changes mm-hmm. every year. So go three months before your birthday and hear how your dialogue and monologue changes so whatever you know so when you hear somebody crying and moaning about something on and on and on you can look forward to times when their when their situation changes and if you're helping them trying to sort through uh their issues look for a date when the sun will square their sun 90 days before their birthday or 
when the solar and lunar eclipses are squared by up-and-coming lunar events like full moons and new moons. And that geometry of that tends to bring, that draws the square, obviously, which is the challenging, but that's where the events happen. The events always happen on the squares, it seems like. That's where most of right. the progress is made. It, yeah. They're action-oriented. Mm -hmm. They're very action-oriented. And we have a lot of that cardinal action, which you had mentioned earlier today, about how much uh, of that cardinal action is, is affecting us. So people with uh, late um, March birthdays and uh, birthdays uh, in the summer, uh, birthdays in the fall, in the October area, uh, birthdays also in, in the Capricorn area, all of those um, times are activated. Uh, they're activated with the uh, cardinal events that are coming up Things will shift to mutable signs, signs later in the year, also coming in with the lunar eclipse this summer. So we get a crossover from cardinal energy, which is, let's talk about a minute, you know, re review the cardinal energy symbolism, Chris. Yeah. Where it's it's all about initiation. I initiation, it's about uh, starting, you know, and they, each of those four cardinal signs dominates one of the four elements that people don't, if they aren't aware of it. Aries is, is fire. After that, we have Cancer, which is water. Then we go to Libra, which is air. And finally, we have Capricorn, which is earth. Capricorn is where all the changes are we're taking place right now, where we, while we're seeing that now. And to have the collection yeah. of five or six planets all there together means it's incredibly intense, which and we, we're feeling this across the globe. We're seeing a lot of this sort of thing. But this is an initiation, I think, and that's the impo most important part. Cardinal signs are initiators, and this might be a, a signal or a time or a clarion cry to say, okay, we've got to focus on the planet now, which I think is very likely to happen, especially as Saturn moves into Aquarius and the, the focus becomes more of a collective undertaking for the planet and, and, in general. Right. Very good. Mm. So if you're planning on um, you know, getting started with something or putting a fire under your pot, uh, these are the times, you know, that the, the winter, the spring, the summer, the fall, those are the action-oriented times for you and me this year. There are, there are all sorts of other things that are going to take place, retrograde and direct things, like Venus is going to go retrograde mm -hmm. on uh, May 20th. Uh, but you want to know what? It goes retrograde at 21 degrees of Gemini. You know what that equals? That oh. equals the birthday of June 12. So people born around June 12, June 11, 12, 13, they're going to be reevaluating uh, what they value, how they, uh, if this is Venus and Gemini, so there's multiple ways of saving, collecting, shopping, accumulating uh, having relationships, partnering, pairing, Venus retrograde is reevaluating that. And then when it goes direct, it's, it's going direct at five Gemini. Well, that equals the birthday of May 26. So people born right around there are going to be moving forward saying, okay, I figured it all out. I know what I value the most. I know who I value the most. Now I'm going to move forward. The, uh, the uh, partner to Venus would be Mars, right. and Mars will retrograde as well on September September 20th. It retrogrades in Aries at 28 degrees of Aries. Now the sign it rules, that, yeah. yeah. that's equal to April 18. Hmm. So if your birthday is April 18th, you've got a hot year coming up because Mars is going to retrograde right over your sun. That's the degree of the April 18th sun. And it goes back, um, it, let's see, it'll go direct and hit the April 5th birthday. I see, yeah. Mm -hmm. but, Makes yeah. perfect sense, yeah. That, that, yeah, that's not till November 13th. Mm -hmm. And, so, and for them both, for Mars and Venus to go retrograde in a year such as this with all this activity is pretty profound. I mean, you know, that's, it's pretty yeah. uh, substantial. We can't, we can't discount that. Exactly. Exactly. And, I mean, there's, they have such cardinal energy, those two planets. They do. You know, yeah. Venus rules Libra for one and Taurus for another and Mars rules Aries and 
there's Scorpio. an ancient correlation to Scorpio, which, right. you know, I, I did a lot of spiritual checking, and I found that Mars actually rules Aries. <laughs> More so than, than so. it does Scorpio, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I can see there's a certain element. I mean, I can see why it's, it's attributed to Scorpio, because there's a certain element that of drive and, and subterfuge that makes sense in some ways, but it, it doesn't fit quite as nicely as it, as it does in Aries. Of course, yeah. So I think that this lunar eclipse, you know, one of the wild things about this lunar eclipse was the conjunction of Jupiter and the south node. It was yeah. exact yesterday. Yeah. And this may have brought to you, to people in your audience, a, a lottery win of some type. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some people may have run out and bought the lottery ticket and maybe won a little something. Or there could have been some other type, maybe a business type, like something one person was talking to me yesterday uh, about uh, setting something, a, a corporation up that they had been working on for three years, and it finally went through wow. yesterday. Interesting, yeah. Huh. And for myself, it was about my bones. I need support for my my bones, and I got confirmation that I will be covered for something that will help support my bones. Capricorn. Your skeletal you know. system, yep. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm. And so maybe you have some reference in your life about how you are supported, feel supported with this Jupiter south node. It's also about freedom, you know, opening the door, letting something out, mm -hmm. letting something in. Mm -hmm. And that makes yeah. perfect sense for where we are. I mean, it, it gives you the sense of, you know, and Jupiter can be, a wonderfully abundant planet, but it also amplifies. And I think people tend to forget that the amplification piece is there because that will tend to draw more power to whatever the shift is and makes it even more profound in many ways. And, I, and, I, and I, I'm an optimistic astrologer by trade, so I tend to think of it more in the abundance, but I'm also aware of the amplification process there and how you can apply that and work with it to bring about um, you know good things. They certainly see it in our personal lives. We feel it in ways, and uh, you know, there's not you know one of the misconceptions about astrology is people always think it's going to be this grand you know shout down from the mountaintop of this or this rain of gold or whatever. These things happen in small wow. small ways and not always not always grand. You know, so right. like you mentioned, a lot of people. Maybe they won twenty five dollars. Maybe they won ten to hundred thousand. Who knows? But that's the that's the that's the parallel there. It's the shift in the heart, I think, that mm -hmm. counts, you know, for what the gift is that is brought your way. Yeah. And, I mean, it just could mean some higher understanding or clarity, you know, about how you're going to manage your, your finances, your home, your, you know, the family, all of that, that you get very, very clear about how you're going to go about that. And that's the gift. Peace in a gift, mind. yeah. So even just getting even just getting the clarity can be an enormous relief. You finally come to terms with something. You know, you may be resisting it, and you finally come to terms with it. Say, okay, this is how we're going to do it. And just coming to terms with it means you can accept it and work with it, which is a is a gift in itself. That's right. Then yeah. you can sleep at night. You can yeah. sleep at night. Exactly. That's that's the problem a lot of us are having these days is trying to get to sleep and trying to keep our words straight and trying to make everything work. We are, as I said, we're right. living in very very confusing times. We're talking today with Dietrich Passen. She's the author of Lunar Shadows 3, The Predictive Power of Moon Phases and Eclipses. Her website is lunar-shadows.com, and it's just L-U-N-A-R-S-H-A-D-O-W-S.com. She's also the host of a radio show every Saturday morning at 9.30 on WZBC, which is 90.3, uh, which is Boston College Radio, but I think they probably have a web feed. I'm not sure about that. You can probably get to it there. We're going to take a quick break right here. I encourage you to check out her books. Very fascinating, interesting. You will be absorbed by this book because it's just so rich with information. And I think Dietrich is one of the real pioneers in the world of astrology. She's really pushing the envelope with regard to interpretation. So she's really a voice to be listened to. We'll return back in a few minutes. In the meantime, check out lunar-shadows.com. Okay, we'll be right back. Thank you. What is your destiny? Where are you going? What is your real purpose? Do you know? Do you want to know? Of course you do. It's your duty to yourself. We are all here for a reason, and we all have great potential. Discover all of this and more with a professional astrology reading. My name is Chris Fisher, and I can help you. Discover your strengths and work on your weaknesses, and live your life to its fullest capacity. Based on your birthday, birthplace, and birth time, an authentic astrology reading will allow you to live your life to the fullest and reveal your true purpose. Only real astrology can give you real information. It is your destiny, 
and it is your path. Write me at chris at chrisflisher.com and book a reading today. Or call me at 978-393-1036. That's 978-393-1036. www.chrisflisher.com. Astrology is the science of spirit, and it can serve as an invaluable aid in making the difficult choices in life and seeking truth in all the directions we choose. It holds the potential to allow each of us to evolve to our highest potential. It is the logic of the universe, the code of existence, and the pathway to true wisdom. It is our duty to draw from it the instructions for our lives, and to live them to our fullest potential. As the great wheel turns, we are best prepared when we are best informed. As the world shrinks and our barriers come down, diverse cultures are striving for harmony, balance, and peace. To ease the transition, we need to expand with color, light, and tolerance. Now, you can become a global citizen and embrace the color and clear spirit with the divine artwork of the mandala. Mandalas are a timeless artistic offering for creating unity, harmony, and peace. My name is Chris Fisher, and I've spent years creating mandalas, and they are now available online at www.turningofthewheel.com. Come and experience the world of color, form, and function with t-shirts, coffee mugs, note cards, and limited edition prints. These vibrant, lively paintings and products express optimism, oneness, and spiritual balance for all who use them. www.turningofthewheel.com That's www.turningofthewheel.com And enter a world of possibility and color. Okay, welcome back to Turning of the Wheel. My guest today is Dietrich Pesson. She's the author of Lunar Shadows 3, The Predictive Power of Moon Phases and Eclipses. And she's a highly regarded... A uh, knowledgeable person in this area, a real expert in the area of eclipses, and then, of course, they're having eclipse coming up. She's the perfect person to have on, as well as being a good friend of mine. She is the ho- uh, not the host of a radio show, but she does host a 15, 15 minute spot on there. Although this Saturday she will have the whole hour because she'll be talking about the year twenty twenty and what is in the in the stars, as they say, for the year to come. But we're talking today primarily about the eclipses, and again, that's WZBC ninety point three Boston College, which I think you can probably get to if you do a search on the web. There probably is a, a web feed there, and her information is really really valuable for everybody who's into astrology or not. Um, we're talking about the upcoming eclipse. And, you know, it's interesting because the United States is a cardinal nation. We're born on July 4th, which makes our sun at 13 degrees, uh, 13 degrees cancer. And here we have this eclipse happening at 20 degrees cancer across the, uh, you know, seesawing, as you mentioned earlier, across to the, the Capricorn mansion where we've got all these planets stacked up, like, you know, like the old days of the airplane stacked up over the airplane, airlines, airports rather. And they're just hovering there. Many of them are big, slow-moving planets. We've got Jupiter there, we've got Saturn, and we've got Pluto there, all of which are significant in themselves. And for them to be clustered together, then we throw the Moon in there, we throw the Mercury in there, we throw the Sun in there, and we have this enormous Capricorn, you know, sort of um, cardinal sign Earth energy there, which represents, you know, represents the, the planet, particularly. And we've seen earthquakes. We saw earthquake in, in two, two earthquakes back-to-back in Puerto Rico this week. So... I hate to say it, but the drums beats are, are pounding in the distance. You can hear them. But I don't think that we have to elicit fear in this regard. I think we just have to approach eclipses with a sense of openness and how can we derive from the best outcome. I think that's often a misconception about astrology, too. People often paint this as dire consequences. The sky is coming down. And it really isn't always that way. You may, your life may change in very significant ways that you ultimately come to enjoy as you take time to ponder and look back. So with that in mind, Dietrich, I mean... Some of the themes that I see coming out, you know, the, the Cancer is the is the cardinal water sign. It's the sign where the moon rules, and um, it rules the moon, rather. And so it's a good combination for the moon to be there, and yet it is directly across the street from all these Capricorn planets, and it really does look quite ominous. And I wonder what you have to say about the sort of the outcome. I mean, do you think it's going to be an Earth-based sort of event that we'll see, or... I think so. But, you know, I mean, there's always an earthquake somewhere. Somewhere, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Now, as things um, are heating up more and more and the earth earth is changing more quickly right under our feet, 
So there's that. There's volcanoes that are likely uh, to be more active during this time. And, and I think also um, the congestion in the business world has some things on the verge of either, you know, climbing to the top and making their their uh, stand uh, in on the globe more, you know, like the currency. Mm-hmm. Currency is right. actually a cancer thing. Okay, so the twenty cancer can change the nature of the currency, and uh, I think you know the big business and the big government and all that. You know, all that. It's all is very Capricornian. Stuff. Big business is all Capricorn and all those big foundational organizations. Right, and and I think the. Uh, the dispute over uh, who's sitting in the seat, you know, and, and who would follow to sit in the seat might be actually scarier. Yep. And there there are a lot of things that are teeter-tottering on this wild eclipse. It's really pretty incredible. And you mentioned the United States chart, which is there's going to be a lunar eclipse on the 5th of July. And it will take place at uh, 13 degrees of Capricorn. And the United States sun is 13 degrees of cancer. cancer. Right. So it's, yeah. So that so lunar means the end of a matter, right? Mm-hmm, right. The end of the matter, all the cards are on the table, everything's out in the open. That's probably also a, a um, you know, one of the conventions for each party okay, you know, right, Democratic exactly. yep, yep. when they yeah. develop they divine their platforms for the coming election exactly so and it does seem like, that it's a very powerful time we are in a time of enormous transition I think that this well the current administration simply serves to be a, a catalyst for this sort of change they are the manifestation of the change that we probably have to go through and I think the eclipses are just speaking to you know sort of emphasizing and, and triggering those 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 that, that momentum right we we you know are a reflection of our own you know our own projection we're we're just you know getting it right back it's feeding right back to us and you know the, the, we mentioned already venus and mars and and they're really critical in regard to watching what happens in this country coming you know this summer um uh, as we see you know, Mars going into Cancer probably not too long before that July 5th eclipse. Uh, and Venus will be uh, just having come out of its own retrograde period. And it's sitting on uh, the planet Uranus, planet of sudden abrupt change, mm-hmm. wild rides, you know. The, so it's it's going to be a very wild summer, you know, and then there's, you know, there's going to be debates, right? You're After right. the primary, there's going to be serious debates to whoever the runners are. So that's going to be probably hard to take. It's probably, going to, it's probably going to reach a new level of, uh, I mean, it's probably going to hit a new low, I, I imagine. I, mean, I can only envision that, but I think that the way the dialogue is given, we saw in the last election, in the last debates, I imagine this to be even more um, dramatic and inflammatory if things if things continue the way they are. I mean, I can't imagine yeah. being anything but yeah. a circus, a circus of sorts. A circus is that's the perfect. But word. you know, I think a lot of the um, a lot of the, the disruption that we're seeing and sort of the outrage that we see people expressing at the way things are going are the slap in the face, and it's a metaphor I use for the sort of waking up America, wake up people, and see what's going on here. If things weren't as dramatic as they are, we might not be as inclined to move. I think that that sort of substantiates the, the sort of the, the underlying themes here. You know, out of this crisis and out of this disruption comes creativity, and that might be a much better place for us to be if we just got to get through this to get there. Well, the problem is getting people to actually listen and pay attention. I find a lot of the people on the, on the Republican side are not really paying close attention. They say, oh, whatever, you know, mm-hmm. uh, I'll say, do you... Do you read uh, these tweets? Do you listen to these statements? Oh, no, no, I don't pay attention to that. Um, That's what they say. And, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who are not following or paying attention to really what is going on. They just have picked a position, picked an icon, 
and they're sticking with it no matter what, mm -hmm. which is really not good. This is not good. Putting your head in the sand like that and not really caring, that's a sense of not caring. Well, it's a and sense of exactly. it's a resignation of sorts, and that's not a good thing because I think that we're just getting bombarded with so much activity that people get f fed up and they get tired. They get media tired. They get media yeah. fatigue. You know, that's the word for it, media fatigue, and you just can't handle any more. You know, every day you think once one crisis happens, you only wait a few hours or so, and another crisis is right there to take its place. And, and all these things get, these news stories get pushed down, like in your email, just to the bottom of the stack where you forget about them. Right, right. And I, I label the one who delivers all of these messages and tweets. It, you know, it has a, it has a quality of terrorizing the individual. You're constantly bombarded with this, that, and the other thing, and it's it's extremely upsetting. I know people that are in therapy because of what's going on at the top here. I'm in not the at country. all surprised. I'm not at all surprised. And it's very it's very uh, vindictive. It's very coarse. It's not, and it's 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 unusual. It's not, we never delivered, you know, direct. We never attacked no. a country and said that we. I, I told you on 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 Twitter <laughs> that we're going to attack this country, so that gave you right. fair notice. How that's 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 absurd that we would even consider that to be a viable means of, of distribution of information. I know. So there's it. a no, lot going on behind the scenes that we don't know about that is really disturbing. I mean, I was listening to a podcast this morning, and they were talking about the briefing for the for the uh, the attack in Iran, and they the senators yeah. were saying this is the most ridiculous charade they ever saw. They said there was no there was no substance to anything. They couldn't back up any of their claims. They couldn't provide any evidence as to why they chose this time to do it. It was, seems like it was just a you know it literally seems like it was a major a distraction of the highest order. <laughs> Right, exactly. Take the attention off the impeachment. Right. And you would think things would be different with Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter, all in the sign of Capricorn, which says this is the kernel position. This is the point that rises the cream to the top. Mm -hmm. And one would think, you know, and so maybe at that lunar eclipse, when all those planets are retrograde in the summer, uh, maybe there will be some uh, some reckoning of all of these. Uh, well, that would be that would be the time when we would see it because then by then the campaign will be really heating up. We'll probably know who the Democratic camp, uh, uh, candidate will be, and yeah. by then once is once then the gloves are off. You can imagine. I can only imagine that the gloves will be off, and every dirty trick will be pulled out to do this. Um, Look at the extent they went to to try to get dirt on Joe Biden. So I, don't th I think the gloves will be off, and I think it'll be a full-throttled attempt to do something of this nature, unless something else happens with regard to health of a candidate or something like that that sort of changes the dynamic, which is also likely. I mean, Right. It happened to Bernie Sanders. But it, it happened, it, it it happened to hurt. Trump. We don't know. He went to the hospital. We don't know what he went for. That was all very hush-hush. You know, there's a lot of talk right. about, you know, him having a mini stroke, perhaps, or something like that. His, some of his yeah. secondary progressions are, are interesting to look at. So we have a whole realm of, of information to look at and speculate on. But we really don't know. But I think what will happen is we'll find these events will come to light and we'll say, oh, wow, that's perfect. Just the way they have recently. I mean, you know, when we were talking about this 10, 15, 10 years ago, at least when I was with, we were talking about what, what it would look like when we got to this date. And it's amazing to see how it's, how, it's, how it's played out because it really did sort of fall right into the puzzle pieces of what we predicted or what we thought would happen. We knew generally we had ideas. We couldn't be specific, but we had general ideas about what this might look like. And sure enough, here we are, and it looks just like that. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that, Chris. What was it? Do you remember what those predictions were? Well, I remember talking about saying, I said, that I remember thinking about it, there being a major reconstruction of some sort. I've always used the idea of a major uh, re responsible reconstruction. So that's, that's obviously major means Jupiter, responsible means Saturn, reconstruction means Pluto. And it was sort of a, 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 a cleansing of the highest order. And I, my theory has always been that we would not have gotten to this place of cleansing if things had not been so bad. So in many ways, this, this administration had to come in there so they could sort of deconstruct and now we come back in, or, or the Congress or whoever comes back in and reconstructs that all the holes that are there. Because the Constitution was written 200 and some 50 years ago or whatever. It doesn't apply necessarily the same way as it does to us today. So it needs to be contemporized. And they're already taking steps to contemporize the Constitution in ways with the War Powers Act and a few other things. So having these things being brought to the, to the surface really drives that point home. You know, no president in the past owned a hotel on, on, on Pennsylvania Avenue because it, right. and, 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 never, and they never 
thought about it. Obviously, the framers were not going to put that in the Constitution back in 1776. You can't have a hotel owned by a president. So wherever there's these holes in the Constitution, those holes, I think, will eventually be patched up so this can't happen again. That's, that's my overarching theory. So it really is a slow reconstruction of a order. And that order may look much different when we get done. We may not be the top dog anymore when we get done. By the time the full Pluto return happens, we may not be that top dog. We may be somebody else by then. So that's sort of I remember. Right. Yeah. 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 And that's a, a very well put. And, and that's, I, how we, I that's how I approached so, it back then. That's how that was sort of the language I was using. And I, I dug up articles I wrote back in 2008 about this. And there, there it is. It's all very clear. And yet we're seeing it. But, you know, it's all about nuance. It's all about interpretation. Astrology is a collection of stories. And the story can vary. But if the underlying theme is substantiated by the planets and the transits, then we have to say, yes, this is it. It's just a different, it's a different telling of the same story. It's a different sort of version. But the story is still there. It's still concrete. Well, I, I was uh, looking, uh, I was lecturing uh, in October before the election in 2016 and talking about, you know, people were very sure that Trump couldn't win. And mm -hmm. I saw Saturn sitting on his moon and I said, do not underestimate what could happen when Saturn's sitting on his moon. He's born at a lunar eclipse. I know. And, yeah. and I said, you know, uh, Clinton uh, had a similar uh, event when he uh, was running for president, and he was impeached. Yes. And I spoke of impeachment back at that time. And sure enough, Trump not only won, but sits, uh, you know, has to sit on a trial for impeachment. So, you know, the the um, Saturn is a big player. Well, the difference in, in, Clinton, in Clinton's case, the difference is he was already he was already in his second term, whereas here we have a president facing a second term under the cloud of an impeachment, which is a much different uh, situation. Right, mm. right. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's going to bother people. I no, don't I either. Think, I, think, I think it's been downplayed too much. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. I think but, too much is about personality here and... You know, there's there's not enough about the substance. Or there's caring. not substance at all. No, it's all about marketing and personality and, and, and sort of this posturing, which in some ways I can understand why the average American likes the way this person talks because he speaks in languages that they understand. I'm not trying to be dismissive of people. I'm just saying it's a, it's a very low common denominator that appeals to a broad mass of people. When you get somebody who's very intellectual, right. like an Obama or an Elizabeth Warren, and they tend to talk in lofty terms, it sort of turns people off in some ways because they think they sound a little bit too, I think that's one of the problems Hillary Clinton had, where she sounded a little bit too, you know, professorial or whatever the word may be, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Mm. That's a good point. The tone, you know, yeah. the tone. I think that's where Bernie Sanders um, rose to the top, but yeah. he had a tone that anybody could understand and relate to. It's got to be a and simple soundbite. They've got to get it down to a very simple, simple soundbite that can be translated to everybody, and, and people can feel it and identify with it. I wish Tulsi Gabbard would, would uh, come out you know, more to the front, um, and her message is, is strong. It is strong, uh, but she's, still, she's got a ways to go. She's got a long climb ahead of her, it looks like. I know it. I know it. Um, she's very nonviolent, anti-war, you know, yeah. and that's... Uh, but, you know, this you is know, a time where we could really see, a, when I talk about a reconstruction, I mean, it really would be sort of a wholesale re, uh, reconstruction, which would indicate something along the lines of a Pete Buttigieg, because here he's a, you know, a gay, very highly educated uh, gay man who has never been, we never had a gay president before, and yet he's incredibly articulate. He speaks, you know, he's, he's been served in the military. All his, his resume is very impressive. Granted, he doesn't, he hasn't outrun a country before, but neither has this, this neither has this president. So that shouldn't be a... You know, right. You know, that, shouldn't that shouldn't be, be <laughs> Yeah, that shouldn't be a deterrent. I mean, if he can run a small corporation, uh, this guy who's running a small, you know, a fairly good sized uh, city and he can do this. <laughs> I mean, as long as you get the right people around you, and that's the secret is getting the right people around you because you don't make all these uh, distinctions by yourself. You need to have advisors. And that's one of the things that's missing is that this cabinet and these a lot of offices have not even been, been filled by this administration. Right. He's doing it all himself. Trump yeah. is doing it all I alone himself. can fix this, as he says. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. that moment when he came out on stage and did that, I thought, wow, this is definitely Neptune in Pisces because here he comes out in a bank of fog and 
telling us this story that we're leaving and we can't tell which is right or which is wrong. To me, it was just a classic Neptunian moment when he came out in the Republican National Convention in a bank of fog. He says, wow, here we are entering into yeah. the fog of Neptune. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So this, this, I mean, these eclipses um, coming up, I mean, I think the important thing is to, for people to be able to identify, and they can through your services especially, um, where these might hit their charts and specific birthdays and specific things. But I also think it's important to issue a warning that this is not always the sky falling. This could be a, a change for the better for many people, and it may very well bode that way. I mean, people, you know, people get married on eclipses, people have babies on eclipses, people do all sorts of things, right. and life goes on. But this is just good to be forewarned i believe is best is best when we are best for when you're best are forewarned when you're best armed i have the phrase on my website i'm just blanking on it right now right. Uh, <laughs> forewarned is forearmed. thank you yeah, thank yeah. you thank you that's my one of my best but, phrases on my thing i'm surprised it took me so long to, but this is the clutter we're going through the, i think one of the bonuses of this lunar eclipse is that jupiter nor uh jupiter south, south node, node. yeah that's that's the that's the gift i think that's really it yeah yeah so there's a silver lining here, definitely. So look for that, use that, plan on that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, don't don't delay uh, your actions if your plans are set up. Uh, you know, and you want to be able to do something, move forward, advance your goals. I think this Jupiter thing is uh, is big, and also, uh, you know, I always use the guide of the full the full moon. When the moon is actually full, which will be 212 tomorrow, then it starts to diminish. It starts to decrease. So anything you're trying to eliminate in your life, you want to go on the decreasing side. Anything you want to build, do it before the moon is actually full. You know, so like up until five minutes, you know, of it. Uh, and, you know, like I always uh, also mention, like when people get married, they often get married on a new moon, thinking that's the best. Well, neither one of you know who the other one is. Right. Uh, there's so much in the dark at that time. Get married at a full moon. Uh, you know, you know each other. All the cards are on the table. Everything's out in the open. Uh, so, you know, you're, you, you know what you're doing and how you're going about it. So this lunar eclipse has a lot of widening of the the viewfinder, widening of the eye, widening of the experiencing, open up your sky, your world, invite new people into your life, interact with others. Um, if you, you know, been sort of shut in and, and staying apart from, maybe it's time to come out mm -hmm. and uh, it's, it's uh, become active in things that are meaningful to you. I think it's really important, and I think you know the the sort of the the talk of the town, so to speak, is that is the is the stellium of planets in Capricorn. Everybody in the world is having this somewhere in their lives, and when you know where that is and you can identify that, which you can through myself or Dietrich, you can determine where the action is taking place. And I think that my advice in this area has always been rather than trying to stop the flow of nature and to stop the flow of natural events in your life, if you find this and you're and you're resistant to it. I think eventually it'll come to you either way. So you're better off going with the flow and letting the river take you where you see where you see the the plans unfolding. Go there rather than trying to resist it. I think resistance will be a futile attempt that will probably end up in a, an unpleasant situation or, or or consequences or outcomes that you may not have wanted. That's for sure. Especially in the summer when the sun and the planets, the transiting planets, all oppose all of these Capricorn planets now you know you you get the chance now when the sun is close to a planet except for mercury and venus when the sun is close to a planet the planet's moving as fast as it can move in its rotation so in its orbit so what you can expect is when the sun is opposite a planet it makes it go retrograde it's standing still standing still right um yeah and and that's when things are held back and that's going to be the slow part of the year. And, you know, we forgot to mention that uh, Saturn is changing signs. That's right. But it comes back. Mm -hmm. It goes out of, uh, in, out of Capricorn into Aquarius, and then it goes back in to revisit with Pluto once again all of the fall months. 
That's sort and, of the cleanup you know, time. <laughs> yeah. On the, the 28th, I think it's the 28th of uh, December, September, September, Saturn yeah. turns uh, direct, and then Pluto turns direct on October 3rd. And this, um, you know, this end, or October 4th, I think it is October 4th. So we have September 29th for Saturn and October 4th for Pluto. So do you see how they're just a few days apart? Two days apart, That's yeah. The- that gives you an example of how close those two planets sit with one another. That conjunction is finished, so to speak, this Sunday. But it's not. We can see it comes back to us coming up this fall as well. So Saturn-Pluto is all those things you just talked about, and that's that restructuring. You know, how many roads have you gone down and in the, in their detours galore? And on the detour, they send you on another detour. Detour, right. Detour upon detour. They're digging up the road. They're replacing the infrastructure. I see that happen every time there's a major Saturn-Pluto aspect. You know, I saw it back in in, um, 2000, 2001, you know, when uh, they would dig up the streets. There was, they dug up the street in front of my house that I lived in for three years changing everything under the ground and laying new cable and new pipe and it's exhausting it's exhausting i remember driving through cambridge uh and many times and i'd go down beacon street and they had just repaved and i thought wow fantastic they repaved beacon street they put new curbing in and then the next very next week they're out there with a jackhammer digging it up again like why did you couldn't you wait to do this before you paved it <laughs> always, right, right. always drove me crazy it's crazy it's crazy. But I think, uh, you know, the, so, the, the eclipses are, can be very educational. They can be very informative. They bring, they shed light on our, on our experiences, and they f- t- force us to sort of reconsider and to make, make a movement and to, and to act. I think action is what this is all about, especially in the cardinal axis. This is about what can you do to initiate? What are you doing to change? How can you act in one ways that make things work? Right. That's right. Mm. Action is what's and, about. Uh, I, action, taking action. But... You know, being not not being um, you know uh, reckless. You no, know, be and thoughtful. Not saying, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the slow be motion of, the, of these planets allows us to ponder these thoughts and mull them over in our lives, turn them over in our brains for a while, till we become to a point where we're, where we're happy with them. Because at first glance or first blush, some of these changes might seem disruptive, but when you ponder and and pull that story out a little further you can see that there's probably great potential in there and i think that's the that's that's the long slow process of saturn saturn you know the retrograde will be sort of well by then we will have already made our decisions and perhaps moved in our direction we're planning to move in and saturn will just come along and say okay here's sort of the reward now you finally have earned your stripes here's the reward and um for the action you've taken and it has it has a very rewarding piece there and it's not about fear it's about evolution and moving forward in your lives for the most part exactly yeah. exactly saturn can be very supportive yeah i agree and, that's, and, and it's, it's not it can be a good player in your chart it's not it's not the enemy that people plant it out to be if it is it's sort of i always equate it to your mother telling you to clean up your room on a saturday afternoon while your friends are outside right. cleaning and it's just uh, outside right. playing rather and it's sort of like just being the responsible person doing the right thing at the right time getting it done and if you do all that you'll have a sense of reward afterwards it does come so that's just to be a point of encouragement Anyway, well, you know, that eclipse that we had the day after Christmas uh, at four degrees of Capricorn was ruled by Saturn. Mm -hmm. And Saturn, um, that eclipse is set off by the lunar nodes on March 22nd. Well, um, Saturn changes signs on March 20th, the first day. Right there, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes into Aquarius. So um, there's a big big news story that we'll find and our stories will change around the first day of spring. I'm encouraged by the fact, I'm I'm actually looking forward to Saturn and Pluto, and Saturn and Jupiter in uh, Aquarius. I think that's where we're going to really come to terms with the the collective planet, our collective environment, and how we can address it. And the responsibility will become to to light there, I think, if it hasn't already. I think that's an important thing to think. 
So, I agree. Yeah. Anyway, my guest today has been Dietrich Pesson. She has a wonderful book called Lunar Shadows 3, The Predictive Power of Moon Faces and Eclipses. Her website is lunar-shadows.com. She's also does a part of a radio show on Saturday morning for about a 15-minute spot, WZBZ, ZBC, which is Zebra Boy Corn. That's just trying to do the old <laughs> thing there. <laughs> and it's uh, uh, 90.3, which is Boston College Radio. And uh, this particular Saturday, she will be doing an hour-long show at that same spot, uh, all about the year to come. And I encourage you to tune in and listen to that. And I encourage you to reach out to her and understand what you can. Because, as I mentioned earlier, Dietrich is, is an astrologer who's really setting blazing new trails with regard to uh, astrology interpretation, astrological interpretation. I think there's a lot to be found there that is really relevant and, in, and quite enlightening to where you, where you are in your life and where you're going. So I encourage you to reach out to her in that regard. So Dietrich, thank you so much for coming on today. It's been great talking to you. You're always a, a font of information and, and, and wisdom. So I always appreciate your coming on. I thank you so much and <laughs> happy new year. Same to you, Dietrich. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Turning of the Wheel with your host, Chris Fisher. To schedule a reading with me or to order artwork, you may visit my website at www.turningofthewheel.com. That's www.turningofthewheel.com or you can call me at 978-393-1036. Thank you. And as always, be open to possibilities.